Hey there. If you're already using Smartsheet, then I'm sure you're well aware of how powerful a tool it can be to help manage your projects. But what if you really want to make your data stand out on your dashboards? Well, today I'm going to show you how to do just that using bar graphs. I'm going to show you how to do it, how to do it correctly, and I'm going to show you all of this in three easy steps. Are you ready to get to the next level? Let's dive in. Let's go ahead and start with the metric sheet here. And first things first is we need to prepare our data for our bar graph on our dashboard. So we already have some metrics going on. And if you watch uh, an earlier training video, I cover the metric widget and this is what this is from. But today we're going to make a bar graph. So anytime I have a metric sheet, I always like to break it up into two sections. The first section is my metric widget data and the second se uh, section is my graph data. So I'm just going to go graph widgets. And then I'm going to outdent this. Make that bold. We'll make this orange. Delete that. All right. So maybe I want to run data on the profit of Billy, Justin, and Susan. But maybe I also want to bring in um, the revenue and the expenses. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this information. I'm going to drag my mouse over this, gonna copy, gonna paste it in. And then for my data over here, I'm just going to copy this, I'm going to paste it in. And then I could put in formulas right here, but uh, for all intents and purposes, I'll just put in some dummy data. So this column is profit. Let's say this is the revenue. And let's say this is the expenses. All right, so let's say this is $1,000. Let's say this is 5,000 and this is 3,000. Highlight this column, we'll make it dollar sign. There we go. And for expenses, we'll just do the minus between the two. We'll say equals, and then we'll say revenue. Click on this, minus sign on the keyboard, and then we'll click on this cell. So revenue at row minus profit at row. So I'm gonna click it. So it's equal sign, revenue minus profit. Click enter on my keyboard, and there it is. So if I take this and drag it, the formula will continue on. And I'll turn this into a dollar sign. And there we go. So let me take this information, paste it into here. And there we have it. So I'm going to click Save. And as I build up more graph widgets on this dashboard, which I will do in uh, future training videos, I'm going to keep building all of my graph information underneath the graph widgets section. And any more metrics, if I'm going to build out any more, are going to be under this section right here. All right, so we have some data here. So let's go ahead and go on to step number two in dragging and dropping and putting in our graph. All right, so we have the data here for our metric sheet. Let's go ahead and go to our dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this here so you can see both tabs that are open so I can bounce back and forth. All right, let's go to our dashboard here. So I'm going to go to my recents, and I'm going to go to dashboard one, two, three. And here's my dashboard. I'm going to go over here to the top left. As always, click Edit. Click Edit Dashboard, the first one, the pencil icon. Now we're in, you see the grid in the background. That, knows, that means that you're in edit mode. I'm going to click Edit again. I'm going to go down where it says Add a Widget over my mouse over here. And then I'm over my mouse over here for the second option where it says chart, where it says chart. All right, give that a click. And then it brings in the widget right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click into this widget. And then over here on the right side, 
this panel right here has to do with this widget right here, this graph widget. So over here, I'm going to choose the first option, which is add data. And then it's going to want me to find a sheet to pull data from. And the sheet I want to pull data from is this sheet right here, my metric sheet, metric sheet one, two, three. So if I go over here, I can actually search for it. Metric sheet one, two, three. I'm going to click search. And there's two of them here. I made an old one a long time ago. So let's click on the first one here. See that it's the same. And here it is. That is a metric sheet. So now that I have this metric sheet in front of me, I'm going to click and drag the range that I want to capture. So I want to make sure that the names of the sales reps are captured. So I'm going to start on the top left. And I'm going to drag and drop drag all this information. I'm not going to use all this information. Like I don't need the sales rep information right here because their names are already put here for me. I don't need this information, but I'm still going to drag and drop everything that I need from the far left all the way to the far right. All right, so let's click OK on the bottom right. And there it is. Now it tries to be helpful and start out a graph for me, and it just so happens to be a bar graph. So let's go ahead and Make this bigger by grabbing one of the corners and dragging it out. All right, so first things first on our ch chart widget is uh, you can choose the different options or the different graphs that you want. That's going to be chart type right here. So if I open this up, I can do a vertical or excuse me, a uh, horizontal bar graph. I can choose a column bar graph, or we can do stacked, and we can do that vertical or horizontal. There we go. All right, the next step here is we want to go ahead and uh, clean this graph up so it actually makes some sense here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go back down. I'm going to choose the uh, horizontal normal bar column graph. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to click into my columns that are included. I'm going to click into this and I don't need everything included. I, like I mentioned, I don't need sales rep because the sales rep name is already chosen here. I don't want Billy and Billy twice. So I'm going to go to click on the column here. I'm just going to click primary column and then profit, revenue, and expenses. If this video has been helpful to you so far, I actually have a full length training video solely on Smartsheet dashboards. I cover dashboards from end to end. And more importantly, I also cover the top three keys to make your dashboard stand out from the rest. This recording was a recording I did off a live Smartsheet dashboard training video that I did on a live webinar. It is yours 100% free. If you're ready to take your dashboard to the next level and you want to really want to up your game, this is your video. This is the video you've been looking for. It's 100% free. Just click on the link below and it's yours. All right, let's get back to this current video. All right, so the dark blue is profit, light blue is revenue, and yellow is expenses. So I'm going to click on the graph here. And if I want to not have the column headers be on this graph, be part of this graph, I can toggle this off. And as you notice here, that the legend changes right here. That's because it's not going off of profit and revenue anymore. Profit, revenue, expenses, because profit, revenue, and expenses are my column headers. And then you notice here that when I turn this off, that all of a sudden, Billy goes away. And that's because this one is toggled on and it's used the first column as a series label. So if I turn that off, you, nobody knows um, what this is. So the first column as series label, that means the first column on the left that we chose, which was primary column, is Billy, Justin, and Susan. If we turn this off, it takes that data off. Now typically, on a bar graph, you're going to have the first toggle button and the second toggle button on. Now the third toggle button can be optional, but if you click this, it flips it. So see how in my legend, dark blue, is profit, light blue is revenue, and yellow is expenses. 
Well, watch the legend right here when I toggle the third option on. You're just switching the rows and the columns on its head. So now profit, revenue, and expenses are grouped down here. And then the dark blue is Billy, the light blue is Justin, and the yellow is Susan. Again, for a bar graph, I usually have the first two toggled on and the third one toggled off. All right, so now we're getting somewhere with our bar graph. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. The next part is our title. There's our title, and the, again, the way I did this is if you just move your mouse over here and click on title, with any of these other buttons here, it will open this up. So let's go ahead and close chart type. We're gonna close this right here, and let's open up title. So you can even choose to have a title on or off. Let's go and give it a title, so what we're looking at. We can call this sales rep financials. And this looks pretty ugly, so let's go ahead and center this. And we'll give it a uh, color here, and maybe we'll turn this white. And then you can also change the title header by just clicking to the title here, doing the same thing. All right, so let's click back into our graph. So we're going to close chart and type. We're already done with title. Let's move on to the horizontal axis. Now the horizontal axis is left to right. Left to right. Just like the horizon. When the sun comes over the horizon, it's going to be the horizontal axis, left to right. So right now we don't have anything on the horizontal axis. So it's always important, it's always a good rule of thumb to always put in information for your horizontal axis and your vertical axis. Horizontal axis, I know these are my sales rep. Sales reps, I'm going to put sales reps. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, maybe a 14. And then the color I'm going to choose, let's go ahead and go with, maybe we go with orange, just for kicks. We'll go with orange. And then uh, you can show the tick marks. It doesn't really make sense to do that because that's on the horizontal plane going up and down. So we're going to leave that off. And Maybe I want the names here on the bottom to be a little bit bigger. So instead of a 10 font, let's choose a 12. And let's make, let's make those black. All right. So let's close the horizontal axis along with the vertical axis. Vertical axis is going to be up and down right here, your vertical axis. And the title, there is no title here. Um, we'll call this amounts. And we'll make that 14, make that a little bit bigger, make the vertical axis black. And let's go ahead and make these numbers right here a little bit bigger, and we'll make them black. Maybe we'll make them 12, and we'll change those colors to black. Now, for this one, I do want to show the tick marks. And this time, they're going to go on the vertical, vertical plane here, left to right. All right, there we go. Got our tick marks. And you can scale to data value. Um, that usually happens when... If you have some pretty skewed um, information, maybe sometimes it makes sense to Scott to uh, toggle this button on. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it off. So let's close the vertical axis. Now let's open up the series. So this has to do with the colors on your bar chart. So I'm going to click up Open Series. The first one I'm going to choose is Profit. I'm going to click on this, and you can put in a custom color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose Dark Orange. Click out, click back into this, and now we did profit. Now let's do revenue. Maybe I'll change this to a lighter orange. And let's open this back up. Let's go to expensives, and maybe let's make this an even lighter orange. So we'll do a gradient. All right. And what I can do is I can show the, t um, the amount above each bar. So for the light orange, let's toggle this on. Always show value at label. Let's go back to revenue. Let's do the same. And let's do the last thing for profit. There we go. Remember, you can drag and drop and make this bigger. You can make this smaller, however we want to do it. Oh, so our amounts aren't orange. So let's click another graph. Let's go to vertical. And let's make this orange. There we go. All right. 
close the vertical. Now uh, we just did the series for these colors. Now let's do the legend, and that's this right here, your legend. For your legend, you can choose if it's top, bottom, left, or right, or no legend at all. No legend at all just takes it off. Uh, you can have it, I usually have it on the bottom here. And then you can also change the font on your legend. Just make that black, and let's make that uh, 14. See how that looks. Now let's go with 12. It's a little too big. There we go. Click save. <clears throat> so on the legend, if you click expenses, we'll take it out. Same with revenue. Profit. Do it for all of them if you want. Anyway, just know you can do that. All right, show what this looks like for drilling down to this report. Here, we just did our legend. The last thing is widget behavior. Now what you can do is you can have your widget, when someone clicks on this on the dashboard, you can have it take them to some somewhere else. You can have them drill down to a report, to another dashboard, to a sheet. Uh, most of the time you're gonna have your bar graph drill down to a report. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna open this up and you get four options. It doesn't do anything when somebody clicks on it. That's the default option. It opens to the data source. That means if someone clicks on this, it opens to the source where the data is coming from, which would be your metric sheet. 99% uh, of the time, you don't want your clients and customers going to the metric sheet. You can go to anything with a URL as a third option. And the fourth and final option is a smart sheet item. So maybe we want this to drill down to a financial report. So I'm gonna click open a smart sheet item. And let's go to Bob's Lemonade. And maybe I wanna to go to the Lemonade report. I click here, click OK. And then I'm gonna click Save. And there is our bar chart. All right, so here is our bar chart on our dashboard. And if I go ahead and I click anywhere in this dashboard, it's not gonna do anything. But if I click into the graph, it will take me to that report that I attached it to. And there's a more granular uh, deep dive drill down into the financials. All right, that is how you create a bar chart within your Smartsheet dashboard. As always, take care and God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.